Hey, welcome to Simple Church Online, and thank you for tuning in today. We hope and pray that if this is the first time that you've tuned in, that it will not be the last. Listen, I, I wanted to be dressed appropriately. See, we're actually pre-recording this service today. Today is actually Wednesday, February the 2nd. And if you live in St. Louis, you know what that is today. This is day one of the, the snowpocalypse, man. I mean, every single year we do this in St. Louis. The first major snow, major snow being anything over two inches, the first major snow of every year in St. Louis, we act like we've never seen snow before, like we don't know what to do, like we don't know how to drive in it or walk on in it or, or shovel it. I mean, it's crazy that all of our stores, they sell out of milk and eggs and bread and toilet paper, and most of the time we only get a few inches. Well, today is day one of the snowpocalypse, um, and as you can probably see, maybe even not, it, it's flurrying outside. We have, I would say, about maybe one and a half, maybe two inches on the ground, but listen, don't worry, because tonight is when it's really going to come, all right? And if it doesn't come tonight, it's really going to come next week. Hey, either way, thank you for tuning in to Simple Church Online. Um, we seriously, we do hope and pray that it won't be the last time. We want to invite you to check us out at one of our live services. We do meet live in person every Sunday at our location at 1020 Anglem Road in Hazelwood. We'd love to see you there. It's the best way to experience Simple Church. Right now we have some worship that we prepared with you in mind. Freedom. 
never be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. And I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm.
too weak to stand back up and fight For the ones to running, he is waiting Like a father with arms open wide Won't you lift your eyes from the ground Heaven is calling out Come and see where true love is found If you're looking for freedom Looking for a breakthrough Looking for somebody who knows Every pain that you own And the things that you're going through If you got a heart that's Broken into pieces If you need a healer, a savior, a miracle maker Then you don't have to Look no further than Jesus For the ones who feel they've been rejected For the ones who hang their heads in shame Won't you lift your eyes from your doubt The cross is calling now With power that can turn your life around If you're looking for freedom Looking for a breakthrough Looking for somebody who knows Every pain that you hold And the things that you're going through If you got a heart that's Broken into pieces If you need a healer, a savior, a miracle maker Then you don't have to Look no better than Jesus You'll find your rest He's a love that has no end See the nail scars in his hands No one else can do what he can He's a place you'll find your rest He's a love that has no end See the nail scars in his hands No one else can do what he can If you're looking for freedom Looking for freedom When our three boys were younger, we had some friends who, who owned a condo down at Lake of the Ozarks. I, I mentioned this last week. Uh, the first time that they ever allowed Becky and I to go down to the condo and stay, our oldest son was, was like 12 years old, our middle son was eight years old, and our youngest son was four. Uh, when we took them down there, it's the first time they had ever been to Lake of the Ozarks. It's the first time they had ever seen the lake and they were just amazed at how huge it was. I mean, when we said lake, they, they were thinking more of like this little pond. So when we arrived, they, they are just absolutely in awe. It's just, it was so cool to see their faces. Uh, since our lodging was going to be free, uh, that enabled us to have some what we call play money. We were able to have some money to, to rent a boat one day and, and a wave runner for a couple days. And all three of our boys, man, they instantly fell in love. Over the course of, of, of the following 10 years, we spent about five weekends a year down at the lake at the condo. And, and we always took one entire week, sometimes a week and a half, usually in July or August. And we would go down to the condo and it, it was right on the lake. It was awesome. 
The, the highlight by far was the time that we spent out on the water, uh, cruising around in a boat or wakeboarding or our, our very favorite uh, riding wave runners. Just a couple of years ago, we returned down to the lake for a weekend with all of our boys who, who are now all adults. And the first thing everyone asked was, uh, what day are we renting a boat? What day are we, we renting wave runners? I mean, they, they were so excited. And, and the answer was, of course, the first day, the very first day. We are not going to waste a second. Uh, we no longer had access to, to the condo that we used to stay at, uh, so we made arrangements online. And uh, we arrived at a place we'd never been to on a section of the lake that we had never, ever been to. Uh, it was very unfamiliar. It wasn't at all something that, that we would have chosen. The only place close to us to rent Wave Runners, just one place, and it was right off the main channel. And if you're familiar with the Lake of the Ozarks, you know this about the main channel. I mean, it is just incredibly busy. And it's usually busy with people who, who don't know how to drive boats and wave runners. And the water is so choppy. I mean, it's like Lake Michigan type choppy. It's absolutely crazy. The, the place we had rented wave runners at before when we used to stay when the boys were younger, it was at the end of this cove. And I'm telling you, the water was like glass. I mean, it was just so, so smooth. And the wave runner would just get up and just glide on it. And, and you could just set and, 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 and float. It was very, very cool, very peaceful. But now here we are right off the main channel in these choppy waters. But I'm thinking, you know what? Our boys, they're all adults now. They're all adults, and, and they're related to crazy, adventurous me, so no worries. So we get to the rental place, and we, we rented a Wave Runner for each one of us, and we all jumped on the Wave Runners. And as soon as we began to idle away from the dock and got out of the idle, idle zone, uh, the oldest two boys just, I mean, they just took off. They're flying. And, and just as I started to, to idle up and take off, I turned, and I saw our youngest son out of the corner of my eye, and he was just sitting there. And I turned and he was kind of in the middle of the idle zone, but the waves are pounding and his wave runner is going back and forth. At one point it turned over and he threw him off and he had to crawl back on. And I'm trying to yell at him and get his attention, but, but, but I, I can't, you know, I, I can't get his attention. So I start to idle back towards him. And as I get closer, I'm like, listen, man, just pull the throttle back. Pull the throttle back. I wanted him to, to pull the throttle back to kind of ease it out of the water and, and, and get the wave runner on top of the water and, and get it get it going. So I'm, I'm like, you know, just pinch it back. Pinch back the throttle. Well, he grabs a hold of the throttle and he pinches it back. He pinches it all the way back and he takes off like a bat out of, well, he takes off. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, the nose of his wave runner came like four feet out of the water and he's just flying. It immediately dawns on me. He has not been back down to the lake since he was like 13 or 14 years old. And the last time he was here, he still wasn't old enough to legally drive a wave runner. So the few times that we may have let him drive one, he was with myself or one of his older brothers. This is the first time he's on a wave runner by himself. I mean, all I could see as I was looking at him was fear in his face. But now he's pinched the throttle all the way back and he is just flying. So now I'm flying. I'm trying to keep up with him. Our other two boys had kind of circled around and I'm pointing at them going, we got to catch him. He, he's passing up other wave runners. He's passing up boats. He's going by docks that are, and he's getting like three or four feet from him. And we're like, oh my gosh. And, and, and as we finally approach him and, and we're getting close to him, we're yelling, you know, take your hand off the throttle, take your hand off the throttle, slow down. And, and once again, it's just like you just see fear all over his face. And as he begins to slow down, once again, he pinches it and he takes off. And because he weighs less than all of us, he's flying and we're chasing him. I mean, all we could see in his face when we saw it for those brief few seconds was absolute fear. See, fear is a, is a crazy thing. It's a crazy force. It, it can make you say things that you wouldn't normally say. It makes us do things that, that we wouldn't normally do. It, it makes us see things sometimes that, that aren't really there. I mean, fear can make you think things you know aren't true or real. 
We can think they are true or they are real. Fear can make you forget things that you know. Let's look at this story recorded in Scripture. We, we find Jesus wrapping up this crazy busy day. He had been traveling around doing his Jesus thing, healing people, teaching people, talking to people, and now he just wants to get away for a few minutes, so, so he wants to take a break. So, so he climbs in this boat with his disciples, and he's like, let's go across the Sea of Galilee. Well, let's look at this as recorded in Matthew, the 8th chapter. It says, when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, a violent storm developed on the sea, so that the boat was being covered by the waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? First off, let's note that they are crossing the Sea of Galilee, which we know is about an eight-mile journey. Let's also note that, that many of these men that have ch chosen to follow Jesus, they're professional fishermen. They're men of the sea. I mean, they're men who, who have surely been in, in a few storms. Somewhere in their journey, this crazy storm hits. And these brave men of the sea, they start freaking out. And meanwhile, Jesus is asleep, which can only be taken one of two ways. Either he's dead or he doesn't really care, right? I mean, he's in a storm. I've often wondered if he's just fake sleeping to prove a point. I don't know. But these men freak out and they wake Jesus up and they're yelling, Jesus, Jesus, wake up, we're about to die. Let's stop right here for just a second. I wonder if part of the reason they're freaking out is maybe the fact that they've decided to follow Jesus, to dedicate their lives to him, to leave everything they knew to follow with him, and now this. I mean, I wonder if they thought that their decision to follow him maybe meant that they were going to have a, a fairly trouble-free life. I mean, did they think maybe they were going to have a life with very minimal storms or, or maybe no storms at all because I mean after all they've chosen to follow him I can't help but wonder if these men were thinking wait a minute I mean this doesn't make sense I mean we have preconceived ideas of, of what you're going to do for us Jesus or, or or what you what you owe us since we've decided to follow you and this this certainly isn't what we pictured how many times have you and I been, been disappointed in Jesus? Disappointed because he didn't live up to our expectations. He didn't perform like we wanted. He didn't come through like we had pictured. We encountered things that we thought we'd be spared from because of our decision to trust him and to follow him. I mean, how many times has life hit and we freaked out? These brave men of the sea got gripped with fear, and it's like they forgot what they knew. They forgot the things that, that they actually knew. They lost confidence in themselves, and they started losing confidence in Jesus. And while all this is going on, Jesus is asleep. I can't help but wonder, have you ever felt like you were facing something horrific, and at very best, Jesus was well, he was asleep. I mean, these men are angry. They're scared. They're in panic mode, and they wake Jesus up. And I'm not sure the reaction that they were expecting from Jesus, but, but I'm pretty sure they weren't expecting his first reaction to their fear and their panic to be a question. But it was. And Jesus looked at them and said, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? This is another one of those Jesus questions where the answer, it's so obvious that you're thinking Jesus seriously. I mean, you got to be so sarcastic. They're afraid because of this storm. Then scripture says Jesus gets up and commands the winds and the rains to stop. And it's perfectly calm. And now these brave men, they have a question for Jesus. They're like, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? They were like, 
Who is he really? How did he do that? Will he do it again? Is it like only a one-time deal? What does he have planned for us? Are we safe with him? Are we going to be happy? Can we take this? I mean, is this worth it? How crazy is this that we find this in Scripture? This story that was penned thousands and thousands of years ago. And I say how crazy is it because you and I today, if we're honest, we wrestle with some of the same questions. It's like this portion of Scripture was preserved for you and I to look at and see that if we choose to follow Jesus, we will still encounter storms, horrific storms. We'll be pulled out of our comfort zone. We'll encounter circumstances that we don't like, we don't understand, we can't figure out. We're going to doubt, we're going to face fear. These men were with Jesus in the flesh. They were following Jesus in the flesh, and they still had questions. They still... They still couldn't figure Jesus out. They were still learning who he was. Listen, Jesus is more than any of us have experienced up to this very moment. There's still so much to experience. There's so much to learn. And what Jesus illustrated to us is that in the middle of our worst storms, that he can overwhelm us with peace that even in life's horrific storms, we can find rest if we trust in Him. That we can find peace if we put our faith in Him. Not faith that He'll do what we want when we want. Not faith that He will always do what we ask and pray. Not faith that, that, that He will do what we think is best in our time frame. But faith in Him that He is who He says He is. Faith in Him, that He is who He says He is, as we continue to experience more about Him and learn more about Him. My prayer for you today is that Jesus would continually, and I mean continually, be revealed to you, and that you and I would come, that we come to really know Him, that, that, that we would see Him for who He really is. My prayer for you is that you would know that God is love and that you would experience that love. Because see, it's perfect love, perfect love that casts out all fear and allows you to experience his calming peace and presence in the midst of life's storms. It allows you to lay down in your boat, if you will, and rest even when it's being tossed around. In these past couple years, All of our boats have been tossed around some way, and I mean way more than others. Things have happened that we don't like, that we don't understand. Things have been taken. Some of you right now, today, you're facing the biggest storm that you've ever faced. So let me ask you the same question that Jesus asked his disciples. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Because listen, Jesus is with you and he wants you to experience peace right in the middle of this horrific storm. Ask for it. Reach out to him today. Let's pray. God, may our faith in you continue to grow as more of who you are is revealed to us. May we walk in faith and work through all of our fears. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Listen, receive this blessing today. Step into today and the days to come with the knowledge that the God who made you delights in you, that the God who shaped you loves you, and will never leave you. You are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. Thanks be to God.